So this morning my message is simply titled The Art of Crossing Over And I'm telling you we are already towards the end of November In another, in another week, couple of weeks we're going to be celebrating Christmas A week from there we're going to be saying bye to 2018 And we're going to be welcoming a whole new year You know now we A lot of us don't really know how fast the year has gone by a year has around 8,784 hours Okay, a year has around 8,784 hours And I have good news for you Over, over 7,000 hours of your life is already finished Over 7,000 hours of your life is finished You're not going to get these hours back But what you can do Is be, is, is be mindful and focus on the hours that are ahead of you Many a times we look back Many a times we look back and say, Oh, I wish I could go back in time and do this and do that. But unfortunately, uh, we're not working in a time machine. We cannot do that. But we need to understand that the time that we have ahead of us is more than enough for God to redeem. Amen? It's more than enough for God to redeem us, redeem our lives, you know, and just wipe away the past. You need to understand that God, God is more than able to give you a clean slate God doesn't remember your past These last 11 months you might have made a whole bunch of mistakes But God doesn't remember that Because His plan is to give you hope and a future and your, and your future is secure in His hands And so this morning, you know, this whole thing I'm telling you, this last season uh, It's been a very interesting journey for us as a church it's been a very interesting journey for, for uh, us as a family And uh, there have been lots of ups and downs But uh, what's the point, I mean what's, what, you know, what joy is there to life if there are no ups and downs You know someone, someone once said uh, ups and downs are really important in life Because uh, even in an ECG if you have a straight line you're dead <laughs> You know even in an ECG if you have a straight line you're dead and ups and downs are very important in life Because they mold us and they shape us And they prepare us to look ahead to what God has in store for us You know, and so it's been an amazing journey for us And every now and then, especially in this last uh, Six or seven months You know, whether it's, in the, whether it's in, the, in the church perspective Whether it's in the spiritual perspective Or whether it's out there in the world there, There's a whole bunch of uh, People talking about crossing over Crossing into new dimensions You know uh, Whether it's technology, whether it's medicine, whether it's science No one is happy With having the same thing constantly There's, People always are hungry And desiring of change And so whether it's, whether it's in technology, in medicine, in science, in fashion You know, there are people who are, who are constantly crossing over I mean, let me tell you, back in the 70s, 60s or 70s, if your parents are still around, I mean, the, the, their pants were probably bigger than their waist. You know, whether it's the bell bottoms or... But as we're progressing year and year, the pants are becoming tighter and skinnier. You know, times are changing. People are changing. We have what we call... Uh, we had what we call the millennials. Now we have Gen X, Gen Y. Generation Z You know and things are changing But every day in life you need to understand that God desires uh, God desires of us to cross over You know God desires of us to cross over Very often we focus on our past victories You know Victories that have taken Victories that have taken place in our life Six or seven years ago And when people ask you uh, What's happening in your life Oh, you know, six, seven years ago, God did this miracle for me. God brought about this, this breakthrough for me. It was absolutely amazing. And then people are, no, but what's happening in your life now? No, but you know, those six, seven years were, were some of the best years of my life. You know, and people keep going back to past successes. But God is not a God who wants you to focus on past successes Because He's more than able to bring about breakthrough and success in your life Every single day You know And so uh, this morning you can turn open your Bibles To the book of Joshua It's a, a really interesting book uh, One of my favorite books The book of Joshua chapter 1 
and uh, I'm just going to go through verses 1 to 9. Chapter 1 verses 1 to 9. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses my, son, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert in Lebanon to all of these places to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. It's so amazing as to how many times the phrase, be strong and courageous, is mentioned just in this chapter. And you know, if you look at uh, Proverbs 13 verse 12, Proverbs 13 verse 12, it says, when hope's dream seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. I'm, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Okay, but uh, basically what this verse is simplified. Okay, it's the same verse I'm reading, but it's simplified in this, in this translation. And what uh, uh, the person who wrote the Passion Translation, Brian Simmons, is simply saying is that when hope's dream seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. Life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. How many of us in this place love delays? No one? Thank God, I'm at a good place. You know, none of us love delays. None of us love delays. We all want a quick fix. We want things to happen right now. God, you need to do this right now. God, listen, I'm going to step into the driver's seat. You sit next to me and I'm going to take you where you need to go. Because I know, I know, uh, I've been driving this car for a really long time and I know how to get you to where you need to be. Many of us do not like delays. We all want a quick fix in life. Whether it's ATM, fast money, fast cars, fast food. We all want things fast because that's the way the world is progressing. But we need to understand that, you know, God's word says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, that he makes all things beautiful just in time. Which means that his timing is perfect for everything. Okay, his, today you, you, you might be in a place where you're looking for a breakthrough in, in a relationship, in your family, in your, in your area of work, in your career. Whatever it is, whichever area it may be, you're looking for a breakthrough. It may be a healing. But I want you to know that God is true to his word. And if he has said it, it's not going to return back void. You need to understand that it will perform and accomplish what it is sent out to do. You know, and so you need to keep in mind that the reason that God doesn't give us things immediately and doesn't release things immediately into our life is because he wants us to be prepared. He wants us to take us to a process of preparation so that when we receive the promise and the blessing, we will know how to handle it. Imagine if someone comes in without you getting your driving license, someone comes in and, and just says, I want to bless you with this car. You know, these are the keys to this car and I just want to bless you with it because I think you really need it. Imagine without having a driving license or not having any prior knowledge of driving a car, you go and sit down in that car, what's going to happen? You're obviously going to crash. So you need to understand that God 
would not allow us to go through something that we cannot handle you know he always does things when he always does things based on the fact that we are true to his word and based on the fact that we are ready to receive the blessing that he wants to pour out into our lives you know speaking about dreams all of us have dreams you know but you need to understand that uh, a godly dream okay a godly dream is not about position it's always about contribution a godly dream is never about position it's always about contribution out in the world people people want to be first they want to be high up there they want to be you know they want to be they want to make it to the top in the way in the kingdom the way up is for you to come down first you know the way up is for you to function from a place of humility and i'm you know uh, when i say that godly dreams are not for are not for the sake of position but contribution is because god's desire is to use each and every one of us to be a blessing and make a difference in people's lives all of you sitting over here are not nobody you know many a times we confess oh i'm nobody i'm just going to church on a sunday i'm just i'm just sitting down i'm not doing anything in church no it's not that you're not doing anything in church you're coming over here and you're you're allowing your heart to get soiled to be watered to be to allow that fruit to allow that seed to fall in in order for that fruit to come forth and when you go out here from a sunday service is what your is is where you do your ministry throughout the week you're not a nobody god's called each and every one of you in this place to be a blessing and make a difference in people's lives wherever you go you know and so when we look at this passage of scripture uh it's a very uh, just just to give you just just a little little bit of a background moses takes the israelites out of egypt they cross the red sea okay but now when they are coming to the part where they're struggling and they're suffering with different things now mind you the israelites were in slavery for 400 years okay but now a man god appoints a man to come and take the israelites out to a place of freedom and they're having all these struggles along the way and then they complain to moses they're telling moses why couldn't you just leave us back in egypt you know why could you just leave us back in egypt where we were happy to be slaves you know where we were happy to be slaves you know why could you just leave us back in egypt where we could die and be buried in the graves over there that you brought us out to suffer but then they see god's miraculous power at work god takes them through the red sea okay and for some of you uh you have you are at the red sea some of you are crossing out of the red sea and for the rest of you have got good news the red sea is coming the red sea is coming but i want to encourage you i want to encourage you that even if today you have a red sea before you i want you to know that no sea is big enough and strong enough for for god not to take you through it amen i want to encourage you and i want to tell you that even if today you are at the red sea god will make sure you cross over even if you are in the middle of the red sea god will make sure you cross over to come to your place of breakthrough and so over here god shows moses in the previous in the previous chapter god shows moses the promised land but he never enters the promised land and then when we come to and then when we come to the book of joshua in the first chapter it says you know it starts off very interestingly it says after the death of moses the servant of the lord the lord said to joshua my servant is dead now then you and all the people get ready to cross the jordan river into the land i'm about to give them you know it's very interesting to see that it was a new season it was the dawning of a new day a lot of people complained a lot of the israelites complained no this is not the way because joshua was a new leader in this place this is not the way moses used to do it you know moses used to do it this way moses never used to drink water with his right hand he always held the cup in his he never drink used to drink water in his right hand he always held the cup in his left hand you know he used to walk like this he used to walk like that and many a times we focus on the past 
because we we get so caught up in a comfort zone that we don't want to get out of it and today I want to tell you that if you're in a comfort zone God's gonna break that in order for you to get out and cross over you know many a times many a times we're just a step away from 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 victory many a times we're just a step away from breakthrough many a times we're just a step away from receiving what God has for us but many a times even though we are a step away we turn back it's not happening it's not happening but you know like someone once said faith is taking a step when you don't see the rest of the stairs you know faith is taking a step when you don't see the rest of the stairs and so it's really interesting in this whole chapter the way God is speaking to Joshua telling him what he needs to do simple instructions you're gonna take the people to cross the Jordan River and he's constantly telling him be strong and courageous be strong and courageous you know we need to understand that sometimes we need to embrace listen pay attention to this this is a very hard sentence sometimes we need to embrace the uncertainty of the future over the familiarities of the past sometimes we need to embrace the uncertainty of the future over the familiarities of the past you know I'm telling you this walk with God is a very interesting walk it's a very exciting walk and you need to understand that as long as you're uncertain about your future you are in a good place you are in a good place many a times we as human beings are wired in a way where we like things that we are familiar with where we like things that we're familiar with no I like this because I know how to do it I like things because I like I like I like it I like this because uh, it, 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 it appeals to me I like you know uh, uh, even even in a walk with God the way we do things the way the patterns of doing things we like to go back to what is what is familiar to us but what I mean what joy is there when you already know what the outward result uh, when you already know what the result is going to be what joy is there when you already already know what the outcome is going to be you know you haven't you didn't have to struggle for it and when you don't have to struggle for it you don't have a story to tell when you don't have to struggle for it you don't have a story to tell you know I always say this all of us desire breakthrough but in order to get a breakthrough and receive a breakthrough from God he needs to take you through a breaking process he needs to constantly take you through a breaking process a breaking process is where he molds you he shapes you he does an inward and an outward work more inward actually dealing with your heart so that when you receive the breakthrough you will know how to handle it and very often when you go through a breaking process and then you receive the breakthrough you have a story to tell you always have a story to tell because when you look back you look back to where you were and where you've come from you know you look back from where you you, you look back to where you came from and where God has brought you right now you look back at all of those hardships all of those struggles all those obstacles that you had to cross over but today when you stand in your place of victory you have a story to tell and you have a story you need to understand that God always takes you through that process in order for you to tell your story because someone somewhere is going through the similar situation and your breakthrough your victory what you've experienced can become breakthrough for somebody else you need to understand that someone somewhere around the world has experienced what you have experienced and so if you don't speak into their life to bring about the breakthrough in their life they will speak into yours you know they will speak into yours so it's good it's good it's really good to embrace the uncertainty of the future over the familiarity of the past I mean for me it's been an it's been an amazing journey of faith amazing journey of faith you know and my wife is an amazing planner and uh, she's brilliant if plan A doesn't work B C D is a backup but for me I'm wired differently I mean sometimes that's good but I'm wired differently 
I think because of past experience of, of my walk with God, of the way God has done things for me. Uh, for me, if uh, plan A and only plan A has to work. Because if plan A doesn't work with God, he doesn't have plan B, C or D. You know, God only has plan A. And so many a times, uh, uh, I'm wired in a way where I keep telling my wife constantly, she'll come up to me with something, I'll be like, yeah, don't worry, it'll happen. Don't worry, it will happen. I don't know where it's going to happen from. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Because you, know, you need to understand, when you look at the book of Jeremiah, it doesn't say, you know the plans I have for you. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. And very often, he doesn't let you in on those plans. But very often, as long as you know that God knows, that's all that you need to know. I'm telling you, something as, as, as minute, like really small. For me, I consider everything a, uh, I consider everything a, a breakthrough or a miracle from God. For me, you know, every day is a miracle. Every day is, 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 is a day that needs to be filled with gratitude. And so, on, uh, we, we came to Bombay last Monday, early morning. We go back this Tuesday, early morning. And um, we went to just do some uh, last minute shopping for my mother-in-law. And it was a Friday. And uh, we finished the shopping at the supermarket. And as soon as we came out, uh, my wife is like, we forgot to get the milk powder for the kids. So I said, I'm not going back in there. I'm not going back in there to get the milk powder. You know, I'm like, anyways, we're not there for the week. So they don't need it. Saturday, I had church. Uh, before we could leave for church in the morning, there was a, my wife received a phone call. And uh, uh, she said she's not answering the phone because she has to get the kids ready. She said, uh, you answer the phone and you speak. So I answered the phone and I spoke to the guy. It was a courier service. And he asked me where exactly is my building and all of these things. And I told him that. And uh, he's, I asked him, why do you want the address? He said, no, because I have a, a parcel to deliver to you. I have a package. I said, what's the package? I said, in whose name? He said, in Livia Fernandez. That's my wife's name. Okay, and no one has her address. I mean, no one has, I mean, she's, her name's never put on anything. And uh, I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, she won a competition. And uh, so I asked her, I'm like, did you sign up for any competition? She's like, no, I never signed up for any competition. So I said, uh, what's the package? He said, milk powder. I'm like, no. I'm like, which milk powder? Because I wanted to be sure that it was exactly the same one that she wanted. So he said, see, I'm from the courier service. I don't know what milk powder it is. I said, anyways, I'm going out. I was leaving for church. He said, okay, I'll leave it with, you. I'll leave it with your building security. We only got back in the night at 12 o'clock. But constantly throughout the day, in my head, it was playing. What, what, what if it is? What if it is, you know? And then we got this box. We took it home. My wife didn't open it. I took the scissors and I was just cutting this really huge box, okay? I took it home and I cut it open. I opened the box. It was the same milk powder that she wanted and we forgot to get from the supermarket. You know? I mean, we don't know how, why or when. But I want you to know that if God wants to get something to you and he feels that, it's, he feels that you need it more than anyone around, more than anyone around you, no matter how long or whatever the procedure may be, he will make sure he gets, gets it to you. He will make sure he gets it to you. And so, you know, the first point that I want to say this, I just have three points, very simple points. The first point that I want to say this, uh, this morning is from, from the verse where it says, No one will be able to stand, verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, the first point that I want you to know and to get it deep down into your heart and your spirit being this morning 
is the fact that you got to know that God is with you. God is with you all the time. You got to know that God is with you. You need to understand that as a, as, as a person who's walking this journey with God, His presence never leaves you. It's not that you enter through that door on a Sunday morning and you're surrounded by His presence and when you walk out of that door, His presence leaves. You need to understand that His presence is around you wherever you go. Wherever you go, His presence is around you in good times, His presence is around you in the worst of times. You got to know that God is with you. Whether it's a breakthrough you need, whether it's a financial struggle, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, you need to know that God is with you and He's more than able to bring about what you need. Amen. The second thing that I want to say is, well, before I get to the second thing, how many of you love swimming? Okay, few of you over here. How many of you learn swimming on your own? Wow, that's awesome. For me, I didn't have the privilege of learning to swim on my own. Maybe in a way I had, but my uncle was a captain of the ship, and so uh, I, I wanted to learn to swim to swim so he said he said okay I'll, I'll teach you how to swim and then he took me to the deep end of the pool that's the worst place to start he took me to the deep end of the pool and uh, I was waiting for him to get into the water and take me in but he took me towards the deep end of the pool and he just pushed me he just pushed me and I started panicking I started panicking and moving my hands all over the place and somehow I came uh, uh, to the place where the ladder was, you know? And uh, I said, I don't want to learn swimming ever again in my life. I don't want to learn swimming ever again. But then he stepped in. He stepped in and uh, he stood next to me. And the first thing he said you need to learn is how to float. How to float. So he did that with me. And uh, he kept his hand under me, under my back, and I was floating. But the moment he removed his hand, I started panicking. You know, I started panicking that I was going to drown. I was going to drown. And again, he put his hand, and he said, I'm not going to allow you to drown. As long as I'm here, you're going to remain afloat. As long as I'm here, you're going to remain afloat. And we need to understand for each one of us, for each one of us going through this life, all of us have the ability to float. All of us have the ability to float. You know, all of us have the ability to float through the storms of life. Why? Because God says, no matter what happens, I'm with you. No matter what happens, I'm with you. I always say this, if Jesus is in your boat, it definitely has to rock. If Jesus is in your boat, it definitely has to rock. And we all need to understand that the ability to float is on the inside of us. When you really know that God is in you, rest becomes easy. When you really know that God is in you, rest becomes easy. The second point that I want to make this morning is be strong from, from, verse, from verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. The second point that I want to say this morning is you need to be before you feel it. You need to be before you feel it. God doesn't say first you feel strong and then you'll become strong. God says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You know, and every point of mine is linked today. When you know that God is with you, you will have the ability to be strong. Because the one who is far more stronger is, is behind you, 
is besides you, is around you. Be strong and courageous. You need to be before you feel it. You need to be strong in your faith before you can see things happening in your life. How, how boring it would be if God says, okay, first I will do this miracle in your life and then I will give you faith. I mean, then we would keep saying, God, do it again. Do it again and then I will believe. Do it again and then I will believe. No, but God gives you a measure of faith beforehand. The Bible says to each person, he has given a measure of faith. So you are not a person over here, you are not a person who is sitting down over here without faith. Because the Bible already says you have faith. Each person has been given a measure of faith. But first he gives you faith. Okay, he releases faith into your life and then he allows you to believe him for the impossible. You need to be before you feel it. You know, I really love this verse, Psalm 108. If you could open Psalm 108, verses 1 to 6. It's amazing. This verse is amazing. Psalm 100, this, this passage of scripture, sorry, these verses. It says, my heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, guitar and bass. I will awaken the dawn. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. He feels really happy, right? Feels very confident and very joyful. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the sky. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And this is the best verse. Save us and help us with your right hand that those you love may be delivered. Actually, it's not a joyful moment. They're actually experiencing battle. There's a fight that's going on in this situation. But then in the last verse, he says, Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. What is he trying to say over here? He's simply trying to say that, irrespective of the way I'm feeling, Right now, my situation is not the best situation. My, my circumstances are not the best. I have people who are coming to have a battle with me, but I'm going to sing. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be strong. I know that you are with me. And you need to understand that when you declare and when you speak out and confess in the supernatural, you will see a manifestation of that taking place in the natural. You know, whatever your circumstances are today, God, I'm, 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 I'm really sick. I desperately need healing today. But I know that you are my savior. You are the one who can save me. You are the one who can heal me. You are the one who can bring about breakthrough in my job, in my finances. And I'm going to put my hope and my trust in you. I'm not going to worry because worrying is a lie of the enemy. But I'm going to stay strong. I'm going to be strong because I know you're going to show up for me. It shifts your perspective. By worrying, by worrying, it's only going to destroy you internally. It's only going to destroy you internally and it's going to affect the way you feel externally. You know? The Bible says, who can add to their life by worrying? Who can add a day to their life by worrying? No one. Then why worry? Why worry? Over here, he's rejoicing because he knows that God is with him. And then he says, save us from this battle. And God saved them. You need to be before you feel it. You know, sometimes, restora uh, sometimes restoration doesn't look like the prom. Sometimes restoration doesn't look like the resurrection of a promise that has died. Sometimes, you know, your promises are gone. You're like, someone has given me this, someone gave me a promise 15 years ago, but it didn't come to pass. If someone gave you a promise 15 years ago, it can come to pass 20 years later. But sometimes restoration doesn't look like the resurrection of a promise. Restoration is different for different people because God wants to connect with you the way he loves to do the most. You know? 
And you need to understand, God loves you more than you would ever know. He loves you more than you would ever know. The third and last point that I want to say this, this morning is this. Verse 8. Verse 8. I'm going to read from a version that I loved. Joshua 1 verse 8. Okay, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. But I like this version. This is what it says. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to do so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Read your Bible continually. Read your Bible daily. Get into God's word daily. My last point this morning is allow God's word to shape you. Allow God's word to shape you. You know, in crossing over, many a times, even within the church, we're so afraid of doing things. We're so afraid of getting out of our comfort zone. Whether it's praying for someone, whether it's giving a word of encouragement or a prophetic word to somebody, we're so afraid. You know, we're happy within that boundary. We're happy, we're, we are happy confined within that circle. We don't want to step out. We don't want to cross over. But you need to understand, by you stepping out and crossing over, you are not alone, but God is there with you in that situation. So if God's giving you a burden or a desire to pray for someone, even if healing doesn't take place instantly, what you did is you stepped out. You took a risk and did what God wanted you to do. If you, are, if, if you are feeling a prophetic word for somebody and you're saying to yourself, I am not a prophet, I want you to understand that even if there's a word that's, 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 that's bubbling on the inside of you for somebody, you need to understand that a word of prophecy is an encouragement to someone. You're not going to go ahead and prophesy, you're going to die tomorrow. That's not a word of encouragement. That's a word of death. Okay? Prophecy is encouragement, edification, and comfort. But even if you feel on the inside of you that you're receiving something for someone, go ahead and give it to them. Because if you don't go ahead, God will raise up someone else to do that. Amen. You know, I always tell this to people. Everyone in this room has the ability to prophesy. Why? Because we all have the ability, we all have the ability to hear the voice of God. Not all of us in this room are called to be prophets, but everyone can prophesy. You know, and whether it's praying for healing, praying for breakthrough, praying for deliverance, releasing a prophetic word, you need to cross over. You need to cross over. We are crossing over into a new year, a new season. Within a month, within a month and some days, 2018 is going to be finished. Don't look back and say, what a waste. But thank God for the good times. And be excited about what's to come because you are crossing over into a new dimension, a new season, a new place of breakthrough, freedom, deliverance, healing, bondages being broken, and a new place of victory. You know, I was in, I was in another country a couple of months ago and uh, it, was a, it was a school, a Bible school. And there was this lady sitting next to me. Uh, she was, I was, I was, uh, she was, there was this lady who was a student who was part of the school on a wheelchair. And in my, now listen, I'm a pastor, okay? And you may, you may, be think, you may think I've got it all sorted out, but no, I haven't, I haven't got it all sorted out. Every day I'm learning. Every day is a new experience for me. I have struggles. I cry. Okay, it's not every, every day is not joyful, but I have struggles. But in those struggles, I know that God is with me. And so this, there was this lady over here. I'm going to be done in about a few minutes. But there was this lady sitting on the wheelchair. And I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit constantly. Go pray for her. Go pray for her. But we always want to take the easy, the easy, uh, 
sicknesses. Oh, you have a cold and cough, let me pray for you. Oh Lord, just bring healing. Oh, it's not gone, but it will go by. Tomorrow morning, you'll be healed. You know? Oh, a person with fractured bone. Ah, you go pray there. We'll go pray for this person. Oh, you have a, your, your finger swollen. Let's just pray. You know? But we want to run away from the things. We want to run away from the things that we are afraid of. When we fail to understand that in everything, in every situation, God is with us. God is more than able to bring about a miracle in any situation. So I went to her because it was, it was, I was feeling uneasy. I went to her and I put my hand. I said, can I pray for you? She said, yes, please. And uh, I said, can I, uh, I, can I put my hand on you? She said, sure. I put my hand on her and I was praying for her. Um, before I could pray for her, you know, like an orchestra, it kept going in my head. Get your mind out of the way. Get your mind out of the way. Get your mind out. You know, like I couldn't get that. You know, this, this thing, this phrase just kept going on in my head. Get your mind out of the way. To the point where I started saying it under my breath. I put my hand on her and I'm saying, get your mind out of the way. Get your mind out of the way. Get your mind out of the way. And then she looks up at me and she's like, I know I have to get my mind out of the way. And I was like, oh, what happened over here? I was like, what just happened? She's like, I know I have to get my mind out of the way. But I haven't been able to do that. I'm like, why? What do you mean? She said, uh, I've just become a Christian. Three, I just became a Christian three years ago. And uh, 12 years ago, I met with an accident. I met with a car accident. And for the last 12 years, I've been paralyzed waist below. I haven't felt any sensation waist below for the last 12 years. And people kept coming and telling me constantly that God's going to heal you. He's going to do this to you. And in my mind, I just kept saying, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I said, I believe in the God who can heal. I'm not God, but I believe in the God who can heal. And I prayed for her. I prayed for her and that's it. The next day she came back to the school and she said for the first time in 12 years, she started feeling pain in her ankles and she was able to move her toes. She was able to move her toes. Now for me, a full-fledged miracle would be her standing up and walking. But she rejoiced as though she was already walking. You know, because it broke something in her. You know, that thing by just saying, get your mind out of the way. I didn't know what it mean. I didn't, I didn't know what it, what it meant at that point of time. Sometimes God would speak to you and tell you, say this. You may not know what it means. It's not for you to know what it means. God wants to release that as someone. You need to cross over from your insecurity out of your comfort zone and release it because it will matter most to that person who needs it. You know, but I, I said, I don't, really, I don't really know when I'm going to see you again. I don't really know if you're ever going to meet, but I believe that when God starts something, he never leaves it halfway. He accomplishes it and he completes it. And she said, the next time you're going to see me is when I'm going to be walking. She said, this is not an accident, but you're going to see me when I'm going to be walking. And she was so joyful just to the fact of wriggling her toes and having pain in her ankles. This morning, you know, the Bible says, in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I said in the beginning as well, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Many of us don't receive, uh, many of us don't walk into an amazing future because we are afraid to cross over. What happened to me last week, last month or last year is going to happen again. That's the lie of the enemy preventing you to walk ahead. But you need in full confidence to step out and cross over. You know what's the definition of hope? Hope is a, con hope is a confident expectation of good. Hope is a confident expectation of good. Which means that you all have hope on the inside of you. You know, God says, plans to give you hope and a future. You all have hope on the inside of you and you can constantly expect for God to always do good in your life. You know, when David, David said his heart, 
okay he said my heart and its confidence is not in my future but it's in you my heart and its confidence is not in my future but it's in you this morning <clears throat> i don't really know where you are placed in your life i don't really know what 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 are the situations you are facing i don't really know how bad or how good your journey with god has been but one thing i one thing i know for sure is that god wants to wants you to know that he's with you he wants you to be strong he wants you to be what he's called you to be before you feel it and he wants his word to shape you